Hello builders, and welcome to the second video in my Lazy Blocks tutorial series. If you wanna check out the first video, which covers the essentials and the basics of using Lazy Blocks, I will link that down in the video description. But today we're gonna to go a little bit deeper, starting with the repeater field, which I'm gonna to use to build this product grid. After that, we'll go into some advanced handlebars helpers, including how you can perform basic math operations on your lazy block fields. And finally, I'm gonna show you the best way to enqueue custom CSS for the lazy blocks that you build. Now, there are two freebies that come along with this tutorial. You'll be able to download the completed uh, product block that I'm building and import it into your own site. And I'll also include a PHP snippet that lets you automatically enqueue a custom style sheet whenever your lazy blocks are used. Uh, you'll be able to download both of those just by clicking the link in the video description. And with that, let's get started. I'm gonna use the repeater block to create a layout inspired by this from smartpassiveincome.com. It's got cool hover effects and it's laid out in a nice grid and it's got these cool little cards. Uh, um, we're actually, actually gonna make them as featured products as opposed to podcast episodes like Pat Flynn is doing here. All right, so let's get that started. So we'll add a new block. And I'm just gonna call this um, Featured Product Grid. Save that draft. And uh, this time I think we're gonna do most of the, um, we can, we use content controls again, we'll try this. Uh, so we are going to add a control and we're gonna add a repeater field. So let's call this, um, call it products. And we're gonna search, this is gonna be a repeater. We give it a label. So we'll call it product dash number. And that will be uh, output, oh, let's see, product. That'll be the label for each new row. Uh, add button label, we'll say add product. Minimum rows, we'll say three. Maximum rows, I don't know, 12, and we'll save that. Now, the way repeater works um, is it's basically a wrapper. And so you will have these child elements inside the repeater and it will keep looping through as many iterations of this repeater as you've created. So we're gonna set up our child co controls now. And the way to do that is you click this show child controls right here. Let me zoom in to actually help you guys if you can see a little bit better. And so now we can start adding our child controls. So if we look at this, what are the aspects that we're gonna need? We're gonna need an image, uh, we're gonna need text, subtext, um, and then a link. So let's get that started, add control, product name, text, Character limit, I will right, we'll say uh, 30. Product blurb, we'll just say like something about the product or how I use it. And this is gonna be another text. Maybe give it 45 character limit. Um, and product image. Make that an image field. and product link. And that's gonna be a URL field. And for the moment, I think that's all we need. Okay, now we can set up our template. And if we go back to the lazy blocks documentation, and we go to handlebars, it basically tells you how you can use handlebars to loop through these repeater fields. So you use an each loop and for each repeater field, it will loop through until you get to the end. There's other helpers we could use. For example, we could uh, put the loop iterator in the HTML if we want. That's some more advanced handlebar stuff and I'll show you to do that as well. So let's write our template. So let's give it an outer container. And then inside this container, we're gonna put our um, each, I'm just gonna give it some space. And this is where, gonna, where we're gonna put our each loop. So write each, and then we need our, whoop, make sure you have the double brackets, right? Uh, and then for each featured products, 
And because it's already inside the brackets, we don't put the brackets again. And then now this inside here, let me close the each loop too, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, just so I don't forget later. And whatever you write inside these brackets is the template that can be output for each uh, loop in the repeater. So we're gonna have um, just an outer wrapper. So we'll just call it uh, class equals product. And then uh, the image will be in its own block. And then I think maybe we'll have another container uh, for these two text blocks. So we're gonna use flex blocks to align these side by side, and then these can just stack on top of each other. So go uh, image class equals product image and the source equals, and here's where we can insert our first sub block. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't auto populate subfield names in this uh, text box. So we actually have to go manually look those up. The name is product image. So we got product image URL uh, is the source and we could say alt equals image alt. And if you don't go through the basics course, uh, we covered how you can access the various attributes of the uh, image fields by using these sort of extensions uh, to access the various properties of the image. And actually I made a mistake here because we put a div as the outer wrapper, but we actually wanna make this a link instead because this can be clickable. Um, so we'll make this an A element. And the source here, whoop, not the source, the href attribute. Uh, is going to be our product link. So we go product link, and then we got another div and we'll call it product text. And in there, uh, we're gonna have two P tags. One is class equals product name. And I'll copy and paste that. and the other is product description. And then we're gonna use our last two fields in there. We'll say product name, and I'm gonna double check that I got these names right. And I think the other one was product blurb. And I did make one mistake here. Um, I meant to, uh, I put the A element on the outer wrapper, but actually what I wanted to do was put it on the, uh, product wrapper inside the each loop. We wanna make this a link here. Um, so we'll grab this. Make this closing tag a link and that should wrap the entire card in a link. That's exactly what we want. Next up, let's publish our block and add it to a post with some demo content so that we can start styling it on the front end. And if I start typing, okay, we should see featured product grid. And again, it's auto-populated because we set a minimum of three, so we can start setting up our products here. So we'll call this uh, Astra. Uh, let's view the page. Now on the front end here, you can see that this is a mess, um, but we have all the elements that we want. We have an image, we got the uh, brand name and the description. We just have to style this up. Now this is a lazy blocks video, it's not a CSS video. So I'm not gonna show you the whole process of designing this, but I am gonna show you the tool that I'm gonna use to do it. And it's called Microthemer. This is an amazing visual CSS editor that literally writes CSS code for you. You can simply design using your mouse to find the selector that you wanna target. And then you can change over 150 different CSS properties, literally just with your mouse and your keyboard. You don't have to type anything out. So just to show you what we're gonna do, um, I'm going to try to find the correct selector here. I'm just going to step through the document. Um, you can just pick any selector on the page and it has its own built-in inspector where I can literally look through the HTML to find the exact class I want to target. So we're going to find this featured product grid and it's guessed a selector that we want to use. Um, but I just want to use the most basic selector here. So we're just going to go down to featured product grid and we can save the selector for reuse later. And this is one of the coolest features of the entire plugin. Um, it has a built-in, it supports CSS grid. So I can like make a drag and drop CSS grid. So let's do this layout real quick. 
Uh, I'm gonna go down to the grid option here and we can just drag this. We're gonna say, we want this to be a three by three grid. And holy moly, it just put these into a grid automatically. So I'm gonna do the rest of the styling behind the scenes and I'll catch up with you when it's done. But if you wanna check out this product, I did an introductory tutorial on Microthemer, which I'll link up here or in the video description, or you can go to buildthatwebsite.com slash Microthemer to check this out for yourself, pick up a copy and support the channel all at the same time. To design our card, I'm doing a few things. Resizing the image with CSS, aligning it to the left using Flexbox, then I add some outer padding, add the box shadow hover effect, style up my text, and add some space between the image and text. All right, that took just a few minutes to do. And as you can see, our cards are all styled up. And of course we can add more cards to this. All right, I've got my grid built and styled and I think it looks pretty darn good. Um, let me just show you a couple more cool secret features of handlebars that you can use with lazy blocks. So go back here and let's say that you want to add a loop counter to each loop item. So maybe you could style certain items differently. Maybe you wanted to do like alternating colors or something. There's a loop index feature. So if we do this index, we can access that number in the loop and we could say product dash and then the loop index number. And if we refresh the page and look at the code, uh, you'll see it's outputting product 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, this is okay, um, but the reason it's putting 0 for product number 1 is because that's the way it works uh, in coding. The first index of anything in a loop is the 0 index. But if you want to make it start counting from 1 for whatever reason, you actually use the secret math operator in lazy blocks. And let me show you how that works. If we look at the documentation here, these are the handlebars. These are sort of additional handy, handlebars helpers that they've built uh, on top of handlebars into lazy blocks. And you see here the syntax. You can do math and you can basically do addition, multiplication, division, uh, even percentages um, using lazy blocks. So we're going to add the number one to the loop index and it should come out exactly how we want it. So let's just put that in here and we're going to say math. And we're just going to do one. And then you got to put the operator in quotes so it doesn't get confused. And now if we refresh the page, you can see now it starts counting one, two, three. So that's pretty cool. Now here's another trick. What if you want to get the number of items in the repeater? Sure, you can count to six at the bottom, but that's no good if you want to put a special class in the parent element. For example, uh, maybe sometimes uh, people will put four elements in and you want to do a two by two grid when it has four child elements as opposed to maybe a three by two grid when it has six. Well, we can use the, the length properties. We'll say featured products dot length featured products products. Try one more time. And you can see here now, uh, it has counted correctly that we have six products in to output that as a class. Now we can use that to lay out our three wide grid as opposed to a two wide grid. And of course, there's other ways you could do that. You could use um, a selector, you could use a, a control for your block that basically lets you set it as a two column grid or a three column grid. It's however you want to set it up, whatever's easier for your workflow. Okay, next up, I would like to talk about how we can load the CSS styles for our custom blocks. And so far we've been using the additional CSS portion of the WordPress customizer, which is a fine solution, but it does have an obvious disadvantage. And that is that this CSS gets loaded on every page of your site, but you might only use it on a fraction, maybe 20 or 10% of your site will actually use these custom blocks. And secondly, it's packaged with all your other additional CSS. And you might wanna keep it separate just to make it easier to find and maintain the CSS for your custom blocks. So there's two good solutions to do this, and I'm gonna show you both. One option is to uh, use inline styles and embed the CSS directly in our block template, which will be output on the page uh, using HTML. And the other option is going to be to conditionally load a separate style sheet for our lazy blocks anytime a lazy block block is put in a page. And we can do this using the built-in has block function of WordPress. So I'm gonna show you both methods, let's get started. So the first way is definitely the easiest and let me show you how that works. Uh, you literally in your HTML template could just put style tags right here and then you can put any CSS that you want 
in here. So for example, we could just say, and we'll say background color, hot pink. And if I update that and reload the page, you can see that it's put that code in the page. And so you can put the entire CSS styles that I just created using MicroThemer and put them and paste them right in here. And it will be loaded along with your block. And you can see right here, if we look at the code, there's our styles. And there's really nothing wrong with this, especially if you're only going to use a block once in the page or, you know, one or two times in the page. It's not that big and it's going to save you code that gets loaded on every other uh, page of your site where you're not using code. So I think that's really a good solution for a lot of people on how to add their code for their lazy blocks. The most efficient method for loading custom block styles is to put them in a separate style sheet, which you can upload to your theme folder or child theme if you're using one like I am. This method does require a bit of PHP, which you could add using a free plugin like Code Snippets. I'll link to these code examples in the video description so you can modify them for your own site. In this example, we'll create a new hook and connect it to WP head. Every time a page loads, this hook checks if our content has any of the lazy blocks we've defined. If it does, it enqueues the custom style sheet for my lazy blocks. In this example, I'm adding a list of all my lazy block names to an array. The names need to be in quotes and separated by a comma. Then the hook checks if the post contains any of these blocks. If it finds one, it will enqueue the style sheet in my theme folder. The CSS file that I created changes the color of my first grid item to blue and adds a hover animation. As you can see, it is loading properly. Now, manually defining a list of blocks to check for can be annoying to maintain if you have more than just a few blocks. So let's automate this. In this example, I'm using WP Query to get all of my published lazy blocks and check if any of them are being used in the post. The best part about this snippet is that it should work for any site and doesn't need to be modified with your own custom block names. All you have to do is swap out the name of your custom style sheet in your theme folder. To use this snippet on your own site, first create a custom CSS style sheet and upload it to your theme folder. Then install and activate the code snippets plugin and create a new snippet, paste in the PHP code I linked in the video description and swap out the name of your own style sheet or use lazyblocks.css as your style sheet name and you don't have to modify the snippet at all. Then save and activate the snippet and it should load your custom CSS whenever a lazy block is used. If you'd like more lazy blocks tutorials or Gutenberg tutorials in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And please leave a comment below suggesting a topic for a future video. In the meantime, feel free to check out my other tutorials and don't forget to keep on building. See you in the next one.